Welcome back to part 4 of the Wigwag engine build. Today we will make the main flywheel for the engine and this will be turned from a lump of 3 inch round brass bar which was cut off at approximately 17 mm wide. My 4 inch independent chuck was set up to accommodate the stock and this was mounted and clocked with the DTI to run true. Firstly the sawn surface was faced off to clean metal and then I used a small spotting drill to make a small indentation as the centre location for marking out. I find the bluing up process to be very therapeutic and as I do it I can feel like a calmness begin to sort of wash over my body and I feel my eyelids becoming heavy and I just relax and breathe deeply as I free my mind from all thoughts and allow my eyes to slowly close and let all my tensions wash slowly away as I fall into a deep sleep. Oh, sorry about that. I guess it's happened again. Now, where did I put my tablet? It's never a good idea to fall asleep with rotating machinery. Now, where was I? The drawing asks for a recess to be turned on both sides of the flywheel. So these dimensions were set on the calipers and then transferred to the stock in the lathe. To rough out the recess, I set my 55 degree tooling to be perpendicular with the face of the disc and then using progressive passes, the recess was turned out to approximately half a millimetre above the finished dimension to allow for finishing. Now you will get sprayed with brass swarf here, so make sure you are wearing appropriate protective clothing. I then used my high speed steel trepanning cutter to turn away at the chamfers left behind by the first operation to create the 90 degree internal angles in the flywheel recess and bring the dimension to size using the scribe lines as a reference. The central boss was also created by the same tool and then the internal face was reduced to the 5mm depth as required. I set my tool stop so that the outer rim of the flywheel could now be turned down just short of the chuck jaws and left just slightly oversize of the finished dimension. This will give me a reference to clock to when the flywheel is flipped over in the chuck. All the sharp edges were knocked back using a file and abrasive polishing pads and the job could now be removed from the chuck ready to turn the opposite side.
The chuck jaws were reversed to allow the flywheel to now be gripped internally on the recess and this again was adjusted to run true by using the indicator against the now turned outer edge of the flywheel to ensure precise concentricity with the opposite side. Readjusting as necessary until the dial was within about one thou. This was then faced, blued and marked out as before and the same turning operations were then performed on this side so that the two sides of the flywheel will be identical. The outer rim is now fully exposed and not restricted by the chuck jaws, so this can now be turned away and brought to final drawing dimensions by finishing with a slow, fine cut across the outer rim. The small indent in the center can now be opened up to 5.9 mm and reamed through with a 6 mm reamer to suit the axle shaft and a final cleanup with a file to remove any edges. I then set up my tall post drilling jig and the angle was set to allow clearance from the flywheel edge with the tooling and a small spot drill was used to start the hole. This was then swapped out for a 2.5mm tapping drill and drilled through. and then followed by the 3mm tap to create the thread for the locking grub screw. Finally, the reamer was then reinserted into the hole to remove any burrs left from the tapping process. I still need to deburr the inside turned edge so this was remounted and taken care of with a file. So that's the flywheel now completed to the drawing specifications. If you wish you can drill six 10mm holes in the flywheel on a 60 degree circle pattern as I have done here. 
as I find this gives a pleasing appearance to the flywheel when in motion. Of course you don't have to make a brass flywheel at all. You can buy cast iron flywheels from eBay etc such as this one here, which I have turned on the lathe and painted the spokes a traditional model engine red. Well, that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in part 5. Thanks for watching. <laughs>